Okay, it's the moment of the big reveal. We've got our drummer ready. Is it a it's a big day. Yeah. You ready for the big reveal? I'm ready. I think there's a few people out there sick and tired of being teased. Thank you, guys, thank you guys for being so patient with us. We hated keeping this from you, but there's a good reason why. Today we're going to try and tell the story of how this boat came about. I think there's some lessons there. It all started back a couple of years ago in the Bahamas of all places and a broken water maker. This is the feed pump. We're in big majors and we're gonna go pick up this part. It's for the water maker and hopefully this new pump will be easy to install. So the water maker breaks down and we have to order a part with Maker's Air, overnight shipping, it's really expensive. So we went to go pick the water maker up at Customs and we're wearing masks because of you know what. And a guy says, hey, are you the O'Kellys? That's where Jason enters the picture. We hit it off with these guys straight away in the Bahamas and hung out on the mega yacht that they were captaining. As happens in the cruising community, we went our separate ways and didn't see them again until two years later here in Australia. So a month ago, we were at Boatworks looking at a different boat and Jason and Claudia just happened to be in the neighborhood. So they stopped by and we got reconnected. So Jason says, hey, I know a guy that knows all about these boats. Let me call him right now and see what he can tell us about this boat you're looking at. So I start chatting with Julian. Now I don't know this at the time, but it turns out that Julian is one of the most highly respected boat builders in all of Australia. He built Cato, just an incredible build, full carbon. It's a rocket ship. Now we get along just great. And at the end of our phone call, Julian says, you know, there is this one boat. I'm not even sure it's for sale. All right, so I dial up John, the owner of this boat, and it turns out he's only about 10 or 15 miles away from us. So we ask our hosts on the Seawind 1160, would it be cool if we headed back towards the marina? We went to see the boat and we really hit it off with the owner. No doubt about it, this boat needs a bit of work. But what was a total green light for us was that the owner was aware of these facts. He knew what the boat needed and he wasn't trying to pretend that the boat was perfect because none of them are. And that gave us a sense that he knew what was going on with his boat. There's no bigger red flag than an owner that says, hey, the boat's perfect. And then you look around and obviously it's not. There was only one major problem with the boat. The owner made it abundantly clear that it was not for sale, at least not yet. We really do not make a big deal about doing YouTube, but it did come up. And it didn't matter because John doesn't watch YouTube. So we checked in with the owner before we headed back out to the islands with our friends on the 1160 that you saw. And, well, the owner had done a little research. He says he didn't watch any of the videos, but he did look at the comments on the videos. And he said, well, obviously you guys are, are loved. We loved the boat, we loved him. So we made him an offer and he said, the boat is not for sale, except to the O'Kellys.
So we were ready to take the boat off his hands right away. In fact, we started calling surveyors and haul out places up there in the Whit Sundays. And the owner said, no, I've got friends coming. I can't cancel on them. I'm not done. So that was a month and a half ago. And that's when we started teasing all of you guys saying, I think we got the boat. We got a handshake deal, but we've got to get it down or the owner's got to get it down to Gold Coast, which is I think five, six, 700 miles. And the winds were not in our favor. We're letting the cat out of the bag. This is a Outremer 49. This is the first 49 that Outremer ever built. It holds a lot of meaning for the company and it really ushered in a new design paradigm for them. They won multi-hull of the year and the rest is history. Yeah, so uh, I guess we we're, we're a little cryptic about all this and I think it's, it's kind of because it's not that we didn't want to share. It's just that we've been down this road so many times with other boats where we were really excited and, and really hyped up about this and shared that. And then things didn't go well. So this time, for whatever reason, we're feeling a lot more optimistic about the chances for success. So here she is. So what were you thinking in those moments? I was thinking I didn't put enough sunscreen on my feet and they were really cooked. <laughs> yeah, walking away from the test sail. You know, there's a bit of pressure on a situation like this. This could be our boat for the next three or five years and you have only four or five hours to evaluate its handling characteristics, the sails, the rigging, how it's all laid out. I gotta say I walked away from the boat with a big smile on my face. It just felt, it felt right, it felt like home. Yeah, that's the feeling I had. I, I felt like this, this feels very familiar, but also like a rocket ship. <laughs> yeah, like clarity, but just on yeah. steroids or something. Yes, it felt manageable. It felt like I could quickly understand how things work. You could see all four corners from the helm position. It just felt really good. I think that's really key when you're moving up in performance level. You want to make sure that the boat's set up and laid out to be managed by, well, a shorthanded crew. And that's, let's face it, that's us. We're yeah. shorthanded. <laughs> and John is a single hander for six years. That tells me a lot about the boat and him. Absolutely. We only got a taste of what this boat can do with her sails up. I like the look on your face though. As soon as we had the Buddha flying, that screecher, that code zero, we were moving along pretty well. Yeah, and that sail is gorgeous. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I think we should run down, I guess, a few of the features that really sold this boat for us. She's light. That was one thing we were looking for, but not too light. Right. The Uchimer 49, the light ship weight, meaning the weight it comes out of the factory before you've added sails and water and fuel is 9.5 tons. As she is today, she weighs a whole lot more than that. I think we'll be trying to bring her weight down as we go through this next refit. 
those fine entry bows. Woo, those were nice. That was a critical item on our list for the next boat. And I love that it has a really nice bridge deck clearance. Yeah, you don't want to be out there slapping and pounding through the waves because this boat can move and move pretty fast. That bridge deck is just over a meter above the water. Dagger boards were a must have for our next boat. Yeah, I feel like dagger boards are absolutely critical for a true performance boat. No dagger boards, I just can't call it a performance boat. I really liked how wide the decks are. There's no ducking next to the shrouds. Absolutely, and one critical factor there is that the dagger boards are built into the outside part of the hull. They're outboard of the center of the hull. Nothing to trip on. High on our list was excellent sail handling, and this boat has it. Being able to balance the boat by reefing the main with several reef points, and also having two working head sails. And a self-tacking jib. Let's talk quickly about the self-tacking jib. This is actually common on a lot of boats now, but we've been missing it on Clarity. Yeah. Every time we tack the boat, we'd have to get that jib sheet to go around the mast, and a lot of times got hung up on winches or other gear. And then we've also got, it's either a screecher or a code zero, and we're not even gonna call it that anymore. Now the name is just Buddha. <laughs> and this boat also has an electric winch. Again, standard on most boats this size. Now, something new for us. All right, let's dive headfirst into the can of worms known as helm position. I know, there's a lot of opinions out there. And in this process of shopping for boats, we tried a couple boats with the outboard mounted helms. We also sailed boats with bulkhead mounted helms. <laughs> Bulkhead mounted helps. It's a mouthful. Bulkhead mounted helps. Bulkhead <laughs> mounted helps. This boat's got a little bit of everything. First of all, there is a raised bulkhead mounted helm. We've got carbon fiber tillers on both sides. Outboard helm seats where you can use a tiller. Get a great view of the sails, feel the wind in your hair. Otherwise, this boat can be steered on autopilot from anywhere on the boat. It's got that old remote control thing. There is a decent amount of cruising gear on this boat. Yeah, I wouldn't say right now it's equipped to sail around the world, but we've got a good start. And of course, room to grow, especially in the solar department. A little more real estate I think we can take advantage of. We're gonna O'Kelly electrify this boat. <laughs> This is a real-time update. Yeah, the video you're watching of the boat coming out of the water, that was a few hours ago. Yeah. We're just getting ready for <laughs> survey, which is gonna be tomorrow. We've got uh, a laundry list, I guess you could say, of things that we know need attention, and it's possible the surveyor will add to that list just a bit. Such is the nature of a cruising boat. John was cruising this boat until just a few days ago. So it's really common to come back into port after seven months out, and you've got a few things to do. If you're interested in hearing the seller's perspective on how this deal came together, stick around till the end, because he'll tell us what he thinks. Yeah, about dealing with the O'Kellys. What's that really like? I feel like the list of thank yous should really take up the next 20 minutes of this video. The support we've had along the way as we've been boatless, those of you who've reached out with a place to stay, a car, taken us sailing, shown us your boat, it's been fabulous. Right now, we're about a half hour south of the boat and we're staying with Jeff and Joanne. Those things, they say, well, you do a mess down here, we're gonna mess up there. We're Thanks, me. You can't really mess up a taco, can you? And then we go with a bit of greenery, just to sort of, you know, veg vegetize the beef. A bit of greenery. Then you've got to get the cheese to stick on. It'll stick to the greens. Then all the good, the jalapenos, the, the squished lemon, the avocado on top. Squished lemon, okay. Yeah, because yeah. squished lime. I've never done lime, so I've got lime on the top. Do you think yeah. I can even get this in my mouth? <laughs> now, I don't want to say that I'm, I'm prejudiced, you know, in any way. I like to keep an open mind, but I'm going to let you know a little secret. I'm not a burrito guy. 
I'm a taco man. And there's a difference. Unless you take a burrito and you open the top and you make it a taco. So I guess in the end, taco's more a state of mind, isn't it? Than an actual construction. I don't think I could come up with a better place to contemplate the meaning of life, where to take this boat, the adventures ahead, than right here. We've been having so much fun making great food. And if you can hear it in the background. The ocean, the ions are just bathing us. <laughs> Beckoning us. Yes. Come out, come out and have an adventure. So a super huge thank you to those guys. And as always, a tremendous thank you to our patrons. We could not be doing this without your support and we're just so grateful for you every day. Thank you everybody for your patience and sticking with us. I know many of you said those O'Kellys, they lost the plot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what's ahead for us? We've got a lot to talk about in terms of what upgrades we're going to do to the boat and there are a lot. We're going to hopefully get into detail on the costs uh, how we're prioritizing what to do for this boat and what difference it's going to make to different systems, the speed of the boat, the handling. I think there's a lot to learn here and a lot to share. Thanks everybody. See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. So the water maker breaks down so this and is we a have to order a part with Maker's yeah. Air, overnight shipping. It's really yeah, expensive. Yeah. So we went to go pick the water maker up at Customs. We have a special surprise. We're aboard Allidade here at the Boat Works, Coomera, Australia. Uh, it's kind of a momentous occasion for us. And it's the culmination of a lot of serendipity on our end, a story that begins actually a couple of years ago. But the serendipity isn't just on our side. The paths have come together from across the mountain. And there's another side to the story.